In this video, we're going to talk about multiplying and dividing monomials and powers. So let's start with the basics. What is 4 squared times 4 cubed? Whenever you multiply two monomials with the same base, in this case 4, you are allowed to add the exponents. So 2 plus 3 is 5. So this is going to be 4 to the 5th power. So here's another example. 3 to the 7th times 3 to the 4th. All you need to do is add 7 plus 4. 7 plus 4 is 11, so this is 3 to the 11th. Another example is x squared times x cubed. This is going to be x raised to the 2 plus 3, which is 5. Now to check it, x squared is x times x. x cubed is x times x times x. Notice that we have 5 x variables multiplied to each other. And that's why it's x to the fifth. Here's another example. b to the six times b to the eight. Go ahead and try that one. So all you got to do is just add six plus eight, and this will give you 14. So that's what you need to do when you're multiplying monomials with the same base. You should add the exponents. Now what about dividing powers? What's 7 to the 8 divided by 7 to the 3rd? When you're dividing two numbers with the same base, you need to subtract the exponents. It's 8 minus 3, which is 5. So this is going to be 7 to the 5th power. Try this one. 2 to the 6 divided by 2 to the 3rd. 2 to the 6 is... Well, what we need to do is subtract 6 and 3, which will give us 3. And 2 to the 3rd? is 8. So A is the final answer. Go ahead and work on these two examples. So the first one is going to be 7 minus 2, which is simply positive 5. The next one is going to be 3 minus 7, which is negative 4. Now if you have a negative exponent, you need to move the x variable from the top to the bottom, and then it's going to change sign. So this is equivalent to 1 over x to the fourth. To confirm it, you can do it this way. x cubed is simply 3x variables multiplied to each other, whereas x to the 7 represents 7x variables multiplied with each other. We can cancel 3 on top and 3 on the bottom, leaving 4 left over on the bottom. So that's why it's 1 over x to the 4th. Here's another example. Go ahead and multiply 3x squared by 5x to the 4th. If you ever see a problem like this, what you need to do is multiply the constants first. 3 times 5 is 15. And then multiply the variables. x squared times x to the fourth, that's going to be x to the 2 plus 4, which is 6. So that's what we need to do when multiplying two monomials together. Now here's another example. Multiply 6 x squared y cubed by 4 x cubed y to the fifth. So let's begin by multiplying 6 times 4. 6 times 4 is 24. Next, let's multiply x squared by x cubed. 2 plus 3 is 5, so this is going to be x to the 5th power. And then y cubed by y to the 5th, 3 plus 5 is 8. And so that's it for that example. Try this problem. What is y cubed times y to the 6th divided by y to the 4th? The first thing we should do is multiply the two, uh, multiply y cubed by y to the 6th on top first. So 3 plus 6 is 9. Now we could divide y to the 9 by y to the 4th. This is going to be 9 minus 4, which is 5. Try a similar problem a cubed divided by a to the 4th times a to the 5th. 
So first, let's multiply these two. 4 plus 5 is 9. And now let's divide. So this is going to be 3 minus 9, which is negative 6. And because we have a negative exponent, let's move the a variable from the top to the bottom. So the final answer is going to be 1 divided by a to the positive 6. Go ahead and divide these two monomials together. 12x to the 4th, y to the 8th, divided by 4x cubed, y to the 4th. 12 divided by 4 is 3. And then we have x, 4 minus 3, and then y, 8 minus 4. 4 minus 3 is 1, 8 minus 4 is 4. So we can write it as 3x, y to the 4th. All right, let's try this one. 35, x to the 7th, y to the 9th. And let's divide it by 63, x to the 4th, y to the 5th. 35 is 5 times 7. 63 is 9 times 7. And then we have x, 7 minus 4, and y, 9 minus 5, which initially will go on top. Now, we can cancel the sevens. 7 minus 4 is 3, 9 minus 5 is 4. And we have a 9 on the bottom. So this is going to be the final answer for that problem. Consider these three problems. What is 2 to the 3rd times 2 to the 7th? And then 2 to the 5th times 4 to the 5th? And also 2 to the 5th times 4 squared, or rather 4 cubed. Now in the first example, notice that we have the same base. If you have the same base, all you need to do is simply add the exponents. So it's going to be 3 plus 7, which is 10. So the answer is 2 to the 10th. Now, in the second example, notice that the, the base is not the same, but the exponents are the same. When the exponents are the same, you can multiply the bases. 2 times 4 is 8. So this is going to be 8 to the 5th. In the last example, we don't have the same base or the same exponent. So we need to change it one way or the other. So what we could do is get the same base first. For example, 4 is equivalent to 2 squared. And when you raise one exponent to another, you need to multiply. 2 squared raised to the third power is going to be 2 to the 6, because 2 times 3 if you multiply these two, it will give you 6. And then you can add 5 plus 6, which is 11. Now, if you type that in your calculator, 2 to the 11th power is 2,048. So that's the final answer. But now, let's do it another way. Another way in which you could do it is you can convert it to the same exponent. 2 to the 5th power is 32, or 32 to the 1st power. 4 to the 3rd is 64 to the 4th power. So if you multiply 32 by 64, you're going to get 2048 to the 1st power. So as you can see, whenever you have the same exponent, you can simply multiply the basis. And if you have the same base, you can add the exponents. Now, I want to show you one of my algebra courses that might be useful to you if you ever need it. So, go to udemy.com. Now, in the search box, just type in algebra, and it should come up. So, it's the one with the image with the black background. So if you select that option, and if you decide to go to course content, you can see what's in uh, this particular course. So the first section, basic arithmetic, for those of you who want to focus on addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And it has a, a video quiz at the end 
It's a multiple choice video quiz. You can pause it, work on the problems, and see the solutions. It covers long division, multiplying two large numbers, and things like that. The next tutorial is on fractions. Add in, subtract in fractions, multiply and divide in fractions, convert in fractions into decimals, and so forth. So you can also take a look at that. Next, solve the linear equations, which we covered, and just more examples if you need more help with that. The next topic, order of operations, which is also for useful, uh, graph and linear equations. You need to know how to calculate the slope. You need to be familiar with the slope intercept form, standard form, and just how to tell if lines are parallel, perpendicular, and so forth. And there's a quiz that uh, goes with that as well. The next topic is on inequalities and absolute value expressions, which are also seen in a typical algebra course. And then we have polynomials, and that's a, a long section. And then factoring, you just that's another topic you need to master. And then system of equations. You can solve it by elimination, substitution. There's also word problems as well. Sometimes you got to solve equations with three variables, x, y, and z. So that could be helpful. Next, quadratic equations, how to use the quadratic formula, how to graph them, how to convert between standard and vertex form. And then you have rational expressions and radical expressions, solving radical equations, simplifying it, things like that. And every section has a quiz. So you can always review what you've learned if you have a test the next day. So here we have complex imaginary numbers. You need to know how to simplify those. Exponential, functions, logs. I have a lot of videos on logs. And then just, this is just functions in general. A vertical line tests, horizontal line tests, how to tell if a function is even or odd. And then conic sections. Graph in circles, hyperbolas, ellipses, parabolas, and things like that. There's two video quizzes because it's actually a long section. And finally, arithmetic and geometric sequences and series. So that's my algebra course if you want to take a look at it and uh, let me know what you think.